Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now today, I've got the jumper on today, it's a bit somewhat colder. Um, I've got to do another music video. Um, partly because it's really quiet here, there's hardly anything going on. I'm waiting for stock from various people, so there's nothing <laughs> nothing new to talk about because there's loads of stuff coming but it's not uh, not actually arrived yet. Um, Darley for one thing, I still, still not had Darley. Um, so I was going to talk about this, an artist that I, I've always really liked. I mean, he's it's, it's a difficult one to get into. Um, and I think most people would struggle with it. I think he's, he's one of those that you either get it or you don't, really. Uh, it's, it's almost sort of the, the Picasso of the music industry, I would have said, or was. Um, and a, a bit like Picasso, nobody get well, a lot of people don't get his art, but he was capable of painting like everybody else. He just didn't choose to. He's just, his mind wasn't connected like that. He was, so a lot of his art is very much his own style, his own thing, and I don't really care, you know, I don't really care what, what people think, this is what I'm doing. And I think the guy I'm going to talk about today is very much of that ilk. Um, he could sing like everybody else, he could write music like everybody else, he just didn't choose to do that. Um, and what I'm going to talk about today is Captain Beefheart. Now, I must admit, I'm, I don't totally get all his music. I think th th there's the sort of very early blues stuff, and then it sort of melds into chaos. I mean, proper chaos. I mean, uh, Trap Mask, Mask Replica and all these sort of things. They're crazy, crazy albums, which in short bursts I can listen to. But some of his earlier things, when he was still quite bluesy, um, I mean, the first album, Safe As Milk, is wonderful. Um, a bit later on, there's uh, Spotlight Kid. has probably got one of my favourite tracks on it. There's a track called Grow Fins that he, he, he did, which is very bluesy, harmonica, all this sort of thing. And it's about a guy who's um, fed up with his girlfriend and th threatens to devolve back into a fish and go and, go and take up with a mermaid if, if she doesn't sort herself out. I mean, it's, it's, it's his kind of mad, mad level of lyrics. Um, but my most favourite of all albums, and I think it's, I keep saying this is my favourite album, but I think of my sort of album, top 10 or 15 or so favourite albums, there's certain ones that have always stuck there and all, have always been amongst my very, very favourites. Um, some come and go, but some have stayed in that sort of top 10 or 15. And Captain Beefheart and his magic band, Mirror Man. Um, is by far my favourite of his albums, I think. Weirdly, when you talk to other sort of Beefheart fans, this is the least liked of... You, quite often, this is the least liked album. I think what I like... I mean, this is a... I'm showing off here. This is a very tatty um, first edition on Buddha. It's got the actual cutout in the front, which um, later versions didn't. They just had the printed front. So, yeah, original Buddha, weighs a ton. I mean, it's two, never mind 200 gram vinyl, this is about three or 400 grams. It's absolutely really thick vinyl it's on. Um, yeah, most people don't get it, but what I like about it is it's it's basically one big jam session. I mean, there's, there's various stories about this album as to what, how it came to be. Um, some people say it was... Um, it was just a session just to get some music together for the album Strictly Personal and certain tracks were sort of taken and put onto that album and what was left became Mirror Man. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether that's true or not. Um, I mean, there's even some confusion about when it was recorded because on the back of, on the back of here it says recorded... Uh, where's it going? Where's it going? Where's it going? Recorded one night in Los Angeles in 1965. Now, that is really early. I mean, that's Beatles' help era. And if you listen, to, this is not like Beatles' help. It's, it's, it's you know, deep blues, really. Um, if you look it up, they sort of, it's sort of suggested it was recorded in 67. It was actually released in 71, so there's it it quite a broad spread of time going on. Um, sort of breaking it down a little bit more, of, it, I think it is, like I say, it's, it's sort of a, a big jam session. Very, very bluesy. Typical B far, the li lyrically it sounds like he's making it up as he goes along, and I think that's part of the charm of it. There's also certain elements where he's, uh, certain tracks where he's playing an instrument that he's literally just picked up some sort of horn and he's making noises in it. Um, and it kind of, it's kind of mad, it's kind of out of tune and it kind of works. It's, I think listen, the first time I listened to this, I, I thought, oh really, I'm not sure, but this, yeah, I'm not really sure, but actually, with a few listens, I got to the point where this 
sort of got into my heart a little bit and I really love it, really love it. Um, rhythmically, it's brilliant. It's one of those, it's very, I mean, I can imagine the sort of drug scene, it being very popular because it's very rhythmic, very sort of little sounds and whatever going on. His voice is amazing. Some people hate his voice. I love it. I think it's it's a bit like the sort of Howling Wolf and that kind of thing. It's got that sort of real gravel to it. Um, very distinctive, little sort of shrieks and um, whatever. It, 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 it tends to go up at the end of a, a sentence. It's like a little at, at the end of a sentence, which is pretty much his own style. Um, but actually, I mean, I mean, there's other tra the, the tra there are other tracks of his that were sort of very similar to this. Like I say, Grow Fins was very similar. Some of the very early, like um, that first Seven Milk album. Um, I mean, he did he did do a sort of semi attempt to hit. I think there was a track called "This Is the Day," which is on unconditionally guaranteed, and that's a, a, a straight kind of pop song almost. It's a bit of a love ballad, really, really good good love song actually. That uh, a bit more conventional. So yeah, um, I mean, track wise on here, there isn't actually a track listing. I have to take the I have to take the album out. Um, 25th Century Quaker is one of the big, I mean they're all, I think it's about a 20 minute song, 20, 25th Century Quaker. Um, Mirror Man, the, the, the sort of title track is superb and that's very, it is almost mes mesmerising sort of rhythm to it, fantastic drumming. Um, crazy lyrics that like I say sound like he's making them up as he goes along, but there's fantastic wordplay in it. Um, you sort of, there's certain phrases that he repeats and repeats and as he's repeating them he's, he's blending them into something else. Um, what there's a um, part where he says um, what is, um, it's unjust, it's unjust, it's unjust, sun just, sun just, sun just coming up or sun just peeping through I think he goes to and it's cha he changes phrases and things like that and it's just superb, it's really really good. Um, what else is on this? 20th, 25th century and twenty uh, fifth century Quaker and Miraman are just on one side, so that's the sort of length of the tracks. Uh, and the other side we've got uh, Terra Plain, brilliant Candy Corn, brilliant two tracks. So there's two tracks aside. Um, produced by Bob Krasnow for Kama Sutra Records on, on Buddha. Not many things on Buddha. I've got a couple of bits. Um, I think like, who else is on Buddha? Have to, I shall have to look that up. But yeah, um, absolutely superb. It's, and it's like I say, it's one of those albums that I sort of tend to put away for a bit and then suddenly get this sort of urge somehow to, to pull it out and, and put it on. And it's every time you, I replay it, um, it, it sort of captures me again. It's got that, that, oh, why don't I listen to this more often? So yeah, that's it. That's, um, put that to one side. Miraman by Captain Beefheart and his magic band. Recommended. Um, oh, and I, my Captain Beefheart story. Um, never actually seen him live, um, but nearly did. Nearly did. And when I found out in later life how close I was to seeing Captain Beefheart, um, after Woodstock, there was various sort of uh, festivals around, around the world. And there was a, one local to where I lived at the time uh, called Bic Bic Bickershaw Rock Festival. And myself and my sister were told that we, we wanted to go to it, but we were told, you can't, you can't go to that. There's going to be there's, there's hippies and drugs and all that sort of thing, so we're not going to, we're not going to take it. My parents decided that it definitely wasn't happening. Um, apparently one of my friends went and told me, not that long ago told me about that, but on a Bickershaw um, Big Show Rock Festival was Captain Beefheart, including Incredible String Band, um, various various bands I'm really into, and they were all there. Um, we could actually hear it from our house. It was, I mean, it was seven or eight miles away, but we could hear it from our house. Uh, so yeah, that was my big missed opportunity. Well, missed opportunity. I was, oh, to be fair, I was quite young, really. I think I don't, whether I would have quite taken it in, I don't know, but uh, yeah, as I say, recommended. I'll see you in a future video. Uh, don't forget to give a subscribe and a like. And I will get back to doing straight reviews of equipment soon, as soon as I've got some more things in, actually, which hopefully will be soon. Because um, not many people watch the record reviews, but um, I enjoy doing them. Anyway, I'll yeah, see you in a future video. Thank you very much. <laughs>